organizational life cycle. We all know that every organization has a life cycle and undergoes very predictable and repetitive patterns of behavior as they grow and develop. In this lesson, we will discuss the stages of organizational life cycle, explain life cycle theory, define the management style, and describe the impact of life cycle on small businesses. After going through this presentation, you should be able to explain stages of organizational life cycle life cycle theory, reasons for business change, growth strategy and management style and organization life cycle and the small business owner. Organizational life cycle OLC is a model that states that the organization's progress through a sequence of developmental stages. This model is linked to the study of organizational growth and development. Startup stage during the startup stage or infant stage, companies accumulate capital, hire workers and start developing their products or services. The organization may be highly centralized. There may be no system for recruiting, developing or evaluating volunteers. Growth stage. At this stage, the organization's beliefs, values, goals, structures and actions become more formalized. The expansion continues into the growth stage where companies increase their resources and workforces dramatically. Despite their expansion, companies may still need additional funds to exploit all the available growth opportunities. Maturity stage. At the maturity stage, the growth gets lowered. By this stage, companies have amassed assets and solid profits by becoming established in the market. Some business theorists consider the foray into new markets a separate stage, namely the diversification stage. The fourth and final stage of the OLC is decline. In this stage, not only company hiring drops but also company sales and profits. To compensate for the decline, companies launch downsizing or re-engineering campaigns during this stage. As companies progress through the organizational life cycle, the criteria for their effectiveness change. Life cycle theory assumes that change is immanent. That is, the developing entity has within it an underlying form, logic, program or code which regulates the process of change and moves the entity from a given point of departure towards a subsequent end that is already prefigured in the present state. What lies latent, premature or homogeneous in the embryo or primitive state becomes progressively more realized, mature and differentiated. External environmental events and processes can influence how the imminent form expresses itself, but they are always mediated by the imminent logic, rules or programs that govern. Life cycle theories of organizational entities often explain development in terms of institutional rules or programs that require developmental activities to progress in a prescribed sequence. A variety of factors contribute to the passage of companies through the OLC. Changes in customer preferences may cause both companies and their respective industries to move into another development stage. A closely related factor is change in products or services. Consumer needs and wants can cause products and services to change and innovative products and services can cause consumer needs and wants to change. To promote new growth, companies also must attempt to introduce innovations and hence company management must emphasize creativity at this point. Maturity and decline tend to result from companies becoming habituated to doing business a certain way during the startup and growth stages and being unable to break these business habits when they cease to be fruitful. Thompson L. Greiner, Lawrence M. Miller and others correlate the stages of the life cycle with different management styles needed to continue growing. The startup stage which involves growth through creativity and vision eventually leads to leadership and organizational problems. During the maturity stage, companies can grow through delegation, yet delegation can lead to control problems with diversified companies. 
Companies also implement systems of coordination to enable their various business units and departments to work together. During the final stage, companies must emphasize growth through collaboration, which includes using teams, empowering workers, removing red tape, reducing corporate staff, simplifying formal systems, increasing conferences and educational programs, and introducing more sophisticated information systems. The challenges that every organization must overcome at each stage of development first manifest themselves as problems that arise from the growth and success of the company and from external changes in markets, competitors, technology and the general business and political environment. Entrepreneurs who are involved in the early stages of business creation are unlikely to become preoccupied with life cycle issues of decline and dissolution. Small business enterprises that are well established on the other hand may find OLC studies more relevant. Many recent examinations of organization life cycles have analyzed ways in which businesses can prolong desired stages of growth or maturity and forestall negative stages like decline and death. Small business owners and other organization leaders may explore a variety of options designed to influence the enterprise life cycle from new products to new markets to new management philosophies. Entrepreneurs and managers should recognize that their business is always somewhere along the life cycle continuum and that business success is often predicated on recognizing where your business is situated along that measuring stick. If you have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. During the final stage, companies must emphasize growth through collaboration, which includes using teams and introducing more sophisticated information systems. Right or wrong? Right. Products and services have their own life cycles, which involve passage through the same stages, startup, growth, maturity and decline. Right or wrong? Right. Lower level managers must not be given more authority if the organization is to continue to grow. Right or wrong? Wrong. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. OLC is an important model because of its premise and its prescription. The model's premise is that requirements, opportunities and threats both inside and outside the business firm will vary depending on the stage of development in which the firm finds itself. For example, threats in the startup stage differ from those in the maturity stage. The OLC model's prescription is that a company's managers must change its business goals, strategies and strategy implementation devices to fit the internal and external characteristics of each stage. Different stages of the company's life cycle require alterations in the firm's objectives, strategies, managerial processes like planning, organizing, staffing, directing and controlling, technology, culture and decision making. Organization Development OD, is a planned approach to improve employee and organizational effectiveness. Life cycle theories of organizational entities often explain development in terms of institutional rules or programs that require developmental activities to progress in a prescribed sequence. A closely related factor is change in products or service.